Today, I want to talk about six ways to achieve financial freedom by moving to a 55 plus community. Now, if you found this video in this channel, you're probably thinking about making a move to a 55 plus community for many reasons. But what I want to explain today are all the ways that I think it will enhance your financial security and your peace of mind and let's face it guys, just overall happiness. So let's dive in and talk about these six ways that that can work for you. So the first thing we want to think about is lower cost of living. Now you might be in an area where taxes are very, very high. In Arizona and many popular destinations for 55 plus communities, places like Arizona, Nevada, Florida, all known to be low tax states. That is a big draw for a lot of people. There might not be tax on social security. There might not be state income tax. And certainly property taxes are a big factor here. So you want to be thinking about that and how you can put that on your spreadsheet. I know you guys all have spreadsheets and for good reason. This is where we're comparing one area to another, one state to another state. You're looking at those ways to get your cost of living down. Now, one thing that a 55 plus community will provide is built-in activities all of the amenities are generally, for the most part, included in your HOA fees. That's a big deal. Now, there might be some little material fees or some club fees and things like that. We'll talk about some of that in an upcoming video. But for the most part, you can hang out at all the things to do for no cost. So you're not having to go outside and pay a lot of money for your entertainment day to day, you're going to the fitness center, you're going to play bocce ball, or like today, we're here at Sun City Grand, just hanging out kind of in their common area of their amenity complex. It's beautiful. There are people all over the place sitting out here enjoying a morning coffee, reading the newspaper, reading a book, socializing. Guess what? No fee for that other than the cost of your coffee, or in my case, iced tea. I'm going to get one here in a few minutes. So that is a really big deal and something to factor in and definitely add to your spreadsheet. Your next thing to think about is simplified home maintenance. When you downsize from that big two-story family home that you've lived in for the last 42 years, you're going to have less space to heat, less space to cool, less rooms that you're not even using. It, you know, if you're like me in the house I had, I was closing off doors so I didn't have to heat those rooms. That's silly. Why did I even have those rooms? In a 55 plus community, these floor plans are definitely designed for carefree, low cost, easy maintenance living. That is a big, big plus for a lot of us as we do want to spend our time doing fun things. We don't want to be tied to home maintenance, a bunch of trees, a lawn to mow, all of those kinds of things. Now, depending on what part of the country you're in, you might have a little bit of grass. I think Florida still has grass in their lawns, but more and more people are going to turf because all you have to do is blow it off now and then. No mowing guys required. Here in Arizona, I call my landscaper maybe every two months and he comes by and does a quick trim to shape up the bushes. But most of my yard is rock and desert plants. Then in my backyard, I did put old turf so I can look outside and see the green because being a Colorado girl, I do enjoy that green grass look, but I don't have to water it. I don't have to pay guys to fertilize it or cut it or overseed it. It is set it and forget it. And I really like that. Now, as far as exterior maintenance of your home in Arizona, stucco. In some places, you might find a vinyl siding product, which is very, very low maintenance. I painted my house for the first time since it was built, and I think it was about 22 years old. So that's a pretty good run with no paint. Our roofs will last 20 to 25 years if you're buying a brand new home or if we're looking for a resale home, we want to look for something where the roof has been updated 
in recent years just to keep your future maintenance costs down. But it's not like other places, for instance, in Colorado, insurance was very high because roofs needed to be replaced every other year sometimes, sometimes twice in a year, depending on how many hailstorms we had. Here in Arizona, we've got warm and warmer. We don't have that kind of weather. So the exteriors of our homes stay nice for a lot longer time period and require much less work. I kind of like that idea. Number three, access to energy efficient homes. That is very important, again, for you spreadsheeters. I know you're tracking utility bills just like I do. I've got a running total. For the record, my bills this year have averaged $140 a month for my electric. Not too bad. If you have solar energy, depending on the age of your solar and the plan, it can be much less than that. Just depends on the plan. My Pebble Creek house is on a grandfathered in plan where I sell power back to the power company. Averages about $14 or $15 a month, guys, for power. So you can crank that AC way down in the summer and not have to worry. Even without solar power, though, very energy efficient because of the smaller size and footprint of our homes. It's a one-story home. I know I get a lot of calls from some of you guys saying, oh, I'd like to move to Arizona, but I just can't because I can't afford the electric bills. If you're coming from a high cost of electricity state, let's say California or other places where you're paying a lot, you really need to analyze that and dig in. My bill has never been $600 a month. Like some of you claim your other people you know are having these big bills. I've never seen a bill like that, and I'm certainly not sweating it out here. I'm very comfortable in my home. We place our homes on the lots for good sunshine in the winter and not as much sunshine in the summer. Again, if you're going for a two-story and you're raising a family, yeah, your bills are going to be higher because your kids are spoiled and, and they want to have cool air 24-7. And a two-story is going to cost more. In a smaller footprint, one-story home, very, very energy efficient, and you're going to save on heating and cooling. My happy times are in the winter when my bills drop down into the 70s per month for electric. That's a big win. Now, the gas bill goes up a little bit when I, I run my furnace, but for the most part, I'm not using a lot of heat here in Arizona, certainly not what I was doing in Colorado. In the morning, I get up, I might put on a sweater and have my coffee under a little throw blanket or something, but then it warms up, the sun comes in, and everybody's outside walking, and it's business as usual. So I want you to know that everything is very energy efficient, especially if you're purchasing a brand new home. That's where you're going to get the biggest energy savings. And so if you are on a tight budget, let's talk about some of the very affordable new small homes. They're not tiny homes that are really like a little container box. These are real homes with bedrooms and walk-in showers and good-sized closets. It's just not wasted space. Therefore, less to heat, less to cool. It's right-sized for this chapter of life that we're all going into. So our next item is access to amenities. Now, I touched on this a few minutes ago, but let's really dive into what those amenities mean for you financially. It means that you don't have to leave the community to have fun, and it is going to cost you a lot less. There are a lot of free things going on all the time. There will be art walks. There will be, you know, driveway parties with your neighbors where everybody brings an appetizer and brings their own beverage. Lots of that kind of stuff going on right in your own little cul-de-sac or on your street. But then you've got access to things, and I do this stuff at Pebble Creek, it's a lot of fun, tribute band concerts. I have been to several that are a lot of fun, and the tickets are $35. Sometimes, I hate to say, but, you know, seeing the tribute band of Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons for 35 bucks is better than 90-some-year-old Frankie Valley who looks like a wax figure and clearly is doing the Millie Vanilli thing. He's, he's got to be lip-syncing. I think I got a better deal with my $35 ticket at Pebble Creek recently. So those kind of things are 
very accessible. You can go with your friends and neighbors or go by yourself and see who you run into. Um, then you've got reduced golf fees for residents. Most of our golf courses on these communities are public, and that is to keep the budget healthy so that residents don't have to have assessments, but they will give advanced tea times and reduce fees to the residents. Then in the summer, when less people are golfing, the rates drop and the public really comes in. So there's a good healthy balance there, but it's certainly going to be cheaper golf than paying three or $400 a round at one of the Scottsdale courses in the winter. If you're somebody who wants to golf all day, every day, that's important. You're going to find lots of discussion groups, book clubs, clubs in general, you know, um, whatever you want. And we've talked about this before. There will be a club. And if there isn't, you can start your own club. But those are very, very low cost, sometimes no cost. So you're going to have a full calendar of free things to do every day. And then depending on what your budget is, you can work in some of the other entertaining things. I love that option. And nobody's going to lock you in the community. If you want to go downtown and go to a Broadway show at ASU Gamage, you could certainly do that. But your ticket is is going to be $82, $100 plus. Dollars, and you can do that every now and then. But monthly, do all the cool, fun stuff that's really cheap or better yet, free in your own community. It's kind of a no-brainer, you guys. The next thing I want you to think about is that you will be in a supportive and resource-rich environment. What I love in many of these communities, if not most, is they'll have some sort of a Facebook group or they use next door where you can post things like, hey, my grandkids are coming and I need a high chair. Does anybody have a high chair I can borrow? That way you don't have to go buy a $200 high chair for those three days that your grandkids are coming. Somebody will say, I have a high chair. Here's my address. Come over and you can borrow it or a playpen or whatever. There are airport drivers, so you don't have to pay as much for an Uber. You can pay a local resident to take you down to the airport and then you don't have to pay to park. You've also got the free built-in sense of community that you're just going to get from your own neighbors and maybe people that you know in clubs. There are people taking care of people. That's something we can't put on a spreadsheet. You can't put a price on that. The value is priceless and it is invaluable at our age and older. Um, when you have family far away, you want to know that there are people there looking out for you. If you don't come out of your house for two days, somebody's probably going to wonder as long as you've built a little network. Now, if you move in and never talk to anybody, shame on you. Nobody's going to know you exist. But when you move in, you kind of meet your neighbors and you do a few things. You get a group of people who are going to care about you and you're going to return the favor by caring for them. So that is something, again, you guys, you cannot put a price on that. And it is so very important and valuable as a part of your 55 plus community experience. Our next thing, I think we're at six now, is increased home value stability. That is very important. And all of us in our earlier years, we were climbing the corporate ladder, raising families, either or, or both, um, had a few moves most times. And we've all been in those neighborhoods where it was a stepping stone and people were cycling in and out every two or three years. 55 plus communities are a little different. Most people intend to be there for the long haul. Now, I know there are some of you who say, we're three-year people, we're five-year people, and then we're going to go on to our next adventure. There is some of that, and that's great. But I get to talk to a lot of you guys who call me and say, this is our last move. We have to do it right. And so the plan is long-term stability. That gives you a higher quality neighborhood and increased value in your home. 
if a community is still being built, you've got those rising prices all the time of new construction. If you bought five years ago, chances are all things remaining, what the market has done over the last 30 years or so, at the end, you're still going to have a good investment if you need to sell your house and maybe go into some time kind of long-term care, assisted living, whatever, you will be able to be realizing a gain from your investment while you enjoyed your home and your neighborhood all of those years. So I see these communities as a big plus. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, gosh, what happens when all of those boomers get old? Guess what? We're at the tail end of us dreaded boomers. I don't like that word anyway. It goes with Karen. Both of those stab my heart. But guess what? The next generation is right behind us and they love these communities. Gen X, they are moving in now. Today I'm filming here at Sun City Grand. It's a 45 plus community. It's got a young, vibrant feel because younger people are allowed to move in here. They will really be here a long term. And so the popularity of these active adult communities is not going to go away because we get to a phase of life where we want to have fun. We want to do things. We have free time for that. We finally have free time to get to know our neighbors. And so I think that is a really big plus. So I think these six points, quick little points that we've talked about today, are amazing ways that will enable you to get more out of your retirement nest egg and realize more financial freedom in your retirement. Many of you have been in the same home for many, many years. You can sell that home for quite a bit more than you ever dreamed of now that we've had a big run up in prices. And you can buy smaller and lower cost in a 55 plus community. That is going to help you have more money left over in your budget then when you get here, you'll realize all of the big fun and big life living you can have in a 55 plus community at a very small cost. So if this sounds like something you'd like to investigate, I'd like you to reach out to me at the number below on the screen or send me an email. Let's set a time to talk by Zoom or by phone and go over some options for you that might help you achieve your financial and retirement goals. I'm excited to talk to you soon.